everybody. I hope you've been enjoying using the new torches that you were given in your latest pack. Um, I know that they've been a big hit in my house. Um, and I thought today I would read a story and then show you an example of an activity that you could do using your torches. So during some of the Zoom calls that we've done, I know that um, you've been telling us about the things that you'd like to see. And we had quite a specific request for something related to the sea and underwater from a big fan of the Octonauts. I don't know if any of you watch that or read the books at home, um, but I'm going to try to link this to a sort of underwater theme. So I'm going to start by sharing one of my favourite books with you. It's called Tiny Whale, A Fishy Tale. I like the way that the front of this story has some nice reflective shiny patches. A lovely underwater scene there little seahorses. Gerald had so many brothers and sisters and cousins that he felt quite unimportant. His dad hardly ever took him to play in the seaweed forest. His mum hardly ever read him stories. Even his best friend Gordon didn't remember his name. Hi Gordon. Hi Gavin. Unbelievable, thought Gerald. I look completely different to Gavin. There's Gerald and there's Gavin. They do look quite similar, don't they? Gerald was tired of being a small orange fish on a reef full of other small orange fish. So one day, Gerald decided to set off on an adventure. Goodbye, Mum. Goodbye, Gareth. Oh, that's not his name, is it? Ridiculous, thought Gerald. I look completely different to Gareth. Oh, they do look quite similar, actually, don't they? I think I might get them confused. After a long and scary swim, oh, look at some of the creatures that he's met along his way. I can see a, an eel there. I can see a seagull swooping down to try and catch him. I can see a jellyfish with its stinging tentacles, and I can see a shark. <gasps> Gerald finally found himself at another reef. He was glad to be somewhere safe. The reef looked like the one at home, but the fish were blue and not orange. As Gerald rested, he watched a group of fish playing hide and seek. Hey, one of the blue fish shouted, Charlie and these are my friends Chuck, Chip, Chad and Chet. What sort of fish are you? Gerald paused for a second. I'm not a fish, he said. I'm a whale. The blue fish seemed impressed. Yep, I'm a whale, said Gerald, and I just swam across the whole ocean. Is that true? Is he really a whale? And did he really swim across the whole ocean? That's amazing! Ooh! Wow! Tell us more! Sometimes I swim down to the bottom of the ocean and catch enormous squid, he boasted. And I'm not even scared of sharks. Hey, everyone, come and meet Tiny Whale! I thought whales would be bigger. Gerald stayed with the blue fish all day, enjoying the attention and telling tall tales until it was time to go home. The next day, Gerald returned and soon there was a big crowd of blue fish listening to his stories. Hey guys, it's Tiny Whale. Is it true he once jumped over a ship? How big is your mum? Gerald stayed for tea which was pretty much like tea at home, but bluer. All the fish gathered in a cosy cave with a small entrance at the top. Gerald was introduced to the oldest fish of all. He wore an eye patch and a red headscarf and he squinted and blinked as he listened to Gerald's stories. Gerald didn't like the suspicious look in his eye. It seemed like a good time to go home. I'm not sure if this fish believes that he's really a whale. 
but it wasn't long before Gerald decided to visit his new friends again. However, this time when he arrived at the Blue Fisher's Reef, it was quiet and empty. Where was everybody? Gerald thought he heard a noise. And then he saw it. A huge boulder sat right on top of the entrance to the Blue Fish's cave. An eye appeared in a crack at the bottom of the boulder. It was one of the blue fish. Hey, tiny whale, he said. Is that you? We're all trapped beneath this boulder. Thank goodness you're here. Can you move it? Oh, we're so lucky we made friends with a whale. Um, yep, said Gerald. L lucky I'm a whale. Uh, this should be easy. Gerald strained and pushed until his muscles shook. But the boulder didn't move. Gerald pushed and strained until his flippers went floppy. But still, the boulder didn't move. Wait there, he shouted down the crack. I'll be right back. Gerald swam faster than he had ever swum. And soon he was back home. Stop everybody, he yelled. Listen. But nobody stopped. Listen, he shouted. But no one listened. Gerald picked up a shell. Listen, he trumpeted. Everybody listened. Hey. It's Godfrey. Oh, it's not Godfrey, is it? It's Gerald. I really need everybody's help, said Gerald. Quick, follow me. The entire school of orange fish sped across the seabed with Gerald leading the way. None of the creatures in the seabed had ever seen anything like it before. Look, they're all working together, aren't they? And they've sort of made the shape of a whale. We need to move this boulder. There are fish trapped beneath it said gerald ready he called now the fish pushed and pushed and pushed the boulder moved a tiny bit then a little bit more and then with a sea shuddering crash it rolled away from the cave out of the cave streamed hundreds of cheering blue fish we're free yippee Woo! The oldest and wisest blue fish came swimming slowly towards Gerald. Thank you, tiny whale, he said, and gave Gerald his headscarf. But how did you recognise me, said Gerald? Because you're the only whale, said the old fish, as he blinked, or maybe winked. It was difficult to tell. Everybody cheered. Gerald couldn't believe it. Finally, everybody knew who he was. Can you spot Gerald? Let's have a look. Hmm. Let's have a look. Can you see Gerald? Oh, hang on. Have a look down here. How do you think I know that this one is Gerald? Because he's wearing the bandana, isn't he? There we go. The end. And look at this beautiful underwater picture. Just like the one at the beginning. So let's have a go at making our own underwater scene, but let's do it using our torches. So I'm going to use a piece of black paper that I got in my activity pack. Now black's a really good colour to use when you're trying to make shadows because uh, light can't travel as easily through dark paper and shadows are all about blocking the light. So if you've got some black paper, it's, it's a really good idea to use it. If not, then some thick card or some cardboard or just some paper will work. So I'm going to use a white pen because my paper's black and a normal pencil won't show up very well on uh, black paper. So I'm going to start off by drawing a fish. I'm going to draw the outline of a fish. There we go, there's my fish. 
Hmm, and I'm going to draw a jellyfish as well. Let's draw a jellyfish. Ooh. With some long tentacles. Three and four. There's my jellyfish with its four tentacles. I think I'm going to draw one more picture as well. I think I'm going to draw a starfish. Let me have a go. One, two. So next, it's time to cut out my shapes. And some of you might have got some scissors in your activity pack that are safe for children to use. Um, make sure you've always got an adult with you when you're cutting. Um, and just remember the rules about not running around with scissors. And when we do move around holding scissors, we hold the point downwards like that, okay? So yeah, make sure there's an adult with you. And if you need a bit of help, then make sure you ask for it. So I'm gonna start off cutting all the way around the outline that I've drawn. Now when you're making shadows, the pictures don't have to be very detailed because details won't show up very well in shadows anyway. If you have trouble drawing your pictures, you could always try looking in some books that you have to help you. And I'm sure there are lots of templates that you could use online on the internet if you ask an adult to help you find them. There we go. There's my first outline for my first shadow puppet. And now I'll quickly cut out the others. So now I've cut out my shapes, I've got my jellyfish, my fish, and my starfish. But there's still something missing. I need to attach these to a stick. So I've got some sellotape and I found these coffee stirrers in my activity pack. You could use these or you could use lolly sticks or I'm sure you can find some other sort of stick at home that you could use. Um, and I'm going to put my stick on the back like this and I'm going to use a piece of sellotape to fix it just like this so that now I can hold my stick and have the shadow puppet on the end let's do it again with the fish hold my fish up put the stick on the back and tape it down there we go and the last one for my jellyfish There we go. So now I've got three shadow puppets all ready to use in my puppet show. So I've come into Edward's bedroom to try this activity because he's got very good blackout curtains, which make the room really nice and dark. Now you might have a room in your house that also has blackout curtains, um, or there might be a room in your house that doesn't have a window, like maybe a bathroom, or if not, you could just wait until nighttime when it's dark, although I know that's getting later now. So, and I've set up, I've just got something here that I can set my torch up on so that I don't have to hold the torch. So look, I'm just going to balance the torch here and I'm pointing it over at the wall like this. There we go. Can you see that spot on the wall? That's made by the torch. Right, I'm going to turn the light off 
ready for my puppet show. Here we go. So now I've turned the light off in Edward's room. It's really nice and dark. I've got my torch propped up over here and it's shining onto my wall. So hmm, which, which shadow puppet shall I try first? I think I'm going to try my starfish. So if I hold the starfish out in front of the torch so that the light of the torch shines on it, there it is. There's my star projected on the wall. There it is here, look, the torch is shining onto the star and making a pattern on the wall. Now watch carefully, if I get closer to the torch, my star gets bigger and bigger, oh, until it's blocking out all of the light. If I get further away from the torch and nearer to the wall, the shadow gets smaller and smaller. There we go. Let's try another one. Let's try the fish. Here it goes. Ah, look, there's my fish shadow puppet. And now let's try the jellyfish, see if that one works. Oh, I like that one. I like the way its tentacles wiggle when I shake it. That's really cool. And if I get closer to the wall, it gets smaller. And if I get nearer to the torch, it gets bigger. Ooh. Wow. There we go. So why don't you give this a try at home? You could use some of the um, materials in your activity pack and use your new torch. And you don't have to make sea creatures like me. You could have a go at making scenes from space or you could choose a favourite story, like a favourite fairy tale, make the characters and then retell the story for your family to watch. Please send me pictures if you have a go, I'd love to see them.